My name's Keith. In this video, I'll be doing work on a Simmons SDS-5 drum module. My client bought this unit from somebody in the UK, so the main purpose of the video will be to show the 220 to 120 volt power supply conversion. Uh, but I'll also be doing a tech walkthrough. Let's start off by looking at the front panel. This is the front panel of a Simmons SDS-5 drum unit and there are seven slots for different drum modules. Uh, but the typical configuration you see only has five of those slots populated, and they are usually the bass or the kick drum, a snare, and three toms. There were two other modules available. There was a cymbal module and also a hi-hat module, but they're fairly rare and you don't see them very often. To the right of that is a mixer module, with a series of knobs to adjust the sensitivity for the drum pads, you know, the hex, hexagonal, classic hexagonal Simmons drum pads, and also another row of knobs to, to create a mono mix of each of the seven channels. And that mono mix was usually a monitor mix that was used by the drummer. Now, I don't have any of the Simmons original pads, so what I did was I took an Arduino uh, microcontroller module and uh, programmed it to generate uh, a repeating pattern over and over again. And that's the, uh, the triggers you see here on the trigger LEDs. And you don't hear anything right now because I don't have uh, anything turned up in the mixer module. Let me zoom into the bass module and I'll go through each of the parameters of the sound. As I just mentioned, I have an Arduino microcontroller module generating a continuous trigger. So that's why you see uh, the trigger LED going off like that. Um, for each of the Simmons drum modules in the SDS-5, there are four preset sounds, and it's, you, would, you could select them by these four buttons. The first one is the factory preset that you can't change unless you open the module and uh, twiddle the, uh, the trimmer pots inside. If you push the second button, an LED lights up above these uh, six knobs, and this allows real-time parameter change of the sound, so you could do this on the fly. If you hit the third button, an LED lights up above this row of trim pots that you can access through these holes. So you'd use like a jeweler's screwdriver or something. So that's kind of a, like an alternate uh, factory preset sound. And there's also a fourth alternate factory preset sound. And you can adjust that if you want here from the front panel. So let me go back to the real-time controls. So the parameters you can change from the top to the bottom are noise, tone and bend, decay, and then a balance uh, between uh, the noise and the tone of the drum, or the, the pitched part, and also another balance control between the click and the drum. The click is like a preset percussive sound, and the drum is the, basically the settings, all of the other settings combined. So I'll talk about noise. So this is basically a filter control, actually, and it adjusts uh, the low pass filter and the characteristic sound of the noise. The second one, well the second and third knobs uh, are combined together and they're the, the give the characteristic Simmons sound, you know that doo, there's a tone so I can increase the tone and there's a bend control and that's the decay part of the drooping part of the, the tone. The next uh, knob is the decay, and that's simply the overall uh, decay of the, uh, the uh, amplitude envelope. So I can go for a long decay here, or shorten it up, and things become more percussive. Next down is a balance between uh, the noise and the tone. So that, if I go all the way to the left, all you get is the noise component. If I mix it all the way to the right, all you get is the tone component or the pitch component. And the final knob is a balance between the click and the drum sound, which is everything else combined. So the click, it's just that little percussive um, tick sound. And it is, uh, the noise and the decay do affect the click. So the noise used in, to create the click sound and the envelope also affect the, the click. And then as you go to the right, it mixes in all of the other components 
to get the uh, the drum sound. So you could go to just the drum sound without the percussive click at the beginning. Now let me zoom out and I'll turn up uh, all of the other uh, channels and then you can hear all of the modules acting at the same time. Okay, let me change everything to the factory presets and then I'll turn up the channels and then I'll play around with some of the sounds. I'll show you the Arduino module. It's nothing special. I simply made a short program that creates a, a loop and, and sends a pattern out to some of the digital outputs. And then they're plugged in directly to the trigger inputs on the back of the Simmons unit. Um, doing this just makes it easier to listen to see what's going on and I don't have to keep uh, manually triggering the channels in some way. So this is the back panel. On the left here we have the mains on off switch, the fuse, and then a uh, jack here, a connector for the cord, the line cord. Uh, and it says power 240 volts, 50 hertz. So after I do the voltage conversion, I'll have to put a label over that to show that it's 120, 60 hertz. And then there are uh, seven columns and three rows of jacks here, uh, one column for each module. The first row are the inputs for the piezoelectric uh, drum pads. Uh, so the cable from each of the, pa the hexagonal uh, pads would go into uh, each of these jacks here. The next row are the channel outputs. So these are line level outputs for the sounds for each of the individual modules. And these are known to be uh, quite low. Um, they're more along uh, mic level rather than line level, but they're supposed to be line level. And below that, there are quarter inch inputs for uh, the triggers. So uh, for each channel. So instead of using the piezoelectric triggers, you can use a 5 to 15 volt um, pulse trigger. So you could connect it up to a drum machine or a modular. And these are the jacks, the input jacks that I was using to trigger the unit with my Arduino. Uh, to the right of that, there's a separate input, an XLR input, for a hi-hat foot pedal. And that was just a sustain, that should be just a sustain switch um, that could be in the uh, closed or the open position because the hi-hat module could make two different sounds, one for an open hi-hat and one for a closed hi-hat. And then there are two uh, outputs here, audio outputs for left and right. So that's the stereo mix output. And then there's a final XLR that just says mix out and that's the mono mix, the monitor mix for the drummer um, that you can control from the front panel. This is what the chassis looks like when it's partially taken apart. And my main goal is to convert this unit from a 220 volt main supply to a 110 volt main supply. But because I had it open, there were some other interesting things that I wanted to point out. So uh, I pulled out one of the modules, this happens to be a Tom, and there are seven slots for different modules, and I also have some of these uh, blank panels uh, if there's a module that's missing or wasn't purchased. Um, but the interesting thing is the connector, the plug-in connector um, for all of the modules is the same no matter what the drum type. So you could move the modules around whatever was most convenient for you. So on the connector, there's a power and trigger input. There's an audio output, and there's also an extra pin here for the hi-hat control. So the hi-hat module could make both an open and closed hi-hat sound and um, depending on the, uh, the you had a, a switch, a foot switch for the hi-hat, depending on whether it was open or closed, it would either be a high or a low voltage on that one particular pin and it would make the high or low hi-hat sound. So that pin exists on all of the module locations um, even if it's ignored, like this TOM module, the, that trace for that pin doesn't go anywhere. So onto the power supply. Uh, the power supply here uses a toroidal transformer. Now you might be more uh, familiar with the rectangular style transformer, 
but the toroidal transformer, because of the design, it can be made much smaller, more compact, and still uh, have the same equivalent power load as a larger rectangular transformer. And this allows um, the transformer to fit into tighter spaces like, like here on, in this chassis. It just fits right at the end. But they're usually a bit more expensive. Now I'll flip it up, and you can see it says upside down. It says 220. So out of the factory, this was a 220 volt main supply, power supply. But my client lives here in Canada, so I'm switching it over to a 110 supply. So on this transformer, on the uh, secondary winding, the output, these multicolored wires, um, it supplies plus or minus 18 volts uh, RMS. So this is a dual output. So there's two there are two equivalent windings on the output. And if you take um, two of the, the, what would be considered the center tap leads and you connect them together, that's the blue and the yellow one here, it's almost impossible to see on the video, but this turns into a bipolar um, supply output. On the primary side, there's a single winding, it's these two pink wires, and that's for the 220 volt main supply. Now unfortunately, there uh, aren't extra taps um, on the input side, the primary side, because then I could convert this to uh, a 110 volt supply simply by um, putting the, the two windings, if they were split, on the input in parallel. So instead, I had to buy um, a replacement transformer. The output of this transformer looks exactly the same. There are uh, four wires and a dual output uh, configuration for the plus or minus 18. And, but on the input side, there are two 110 volt windings. So if you took the sensor wires and connected them together, I'm trying to <laughs> show how this might work, and then you put 220 volts on the two um, external wires so that the, 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 across the, the entire winding, it would act as a 220 volt main supply winding. But you could also wire them in parallel and that would then act as a 110 volt uh, main supply winding. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and then after I replace the transformer, I'm also going to replace the original um, electrolytic uh, filter caps because they're original to this unit. So they're definitely uh, due for replacement. So I've replaced the transformer and the uh, caps to the power supply. Um, but I powered it up, but I first took all of the uh, drum modules out because I just want to make sure that everything's okay with the power supply. Um, so I've hooked up uh, the plus and minus 15 volt rails to my scope and my multimeter and I'll zoom in on that. So here's the scope and it shows the plus and minus 15 volt rails and things look nice and stable. And I've got the positive rail connected to the meter and it's showing uh, plus 15 volts. So I'll switch it over to the negative rail. And it's showing minus 15.1 something volts. So that's good. I think I can put the drum modules in. Well, that's it for this video. I'll leave you with a few more sounds of this Simmons unit. Thanks for watching.